Good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Good to be here once again to talk about the spiritual revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ versus a natural understanding. It's really good to be here to talk about His Word because His Word is life. His Word brings the Spirit. His Word brings understanding. And we're very fortunate to know that we have a lot of understanding in this day and age because God has sent his prophet messenger to give us that understanding. It's God himself in the form of his word to give us a great revelation, a great understanding of where we came from, who we are, where we're going, and what our purpose is, what his perfect will is as opposed to his permissive will, and these types of things. And so we're going to be talking a lot about natural understanding versus revelation and spiritual understanding spiritual revelation we understand that the prophet said that it's incredibly important to the church with spiritual revelation you can understand um that you know with a natural understanding sometimes well i'll just read what i have here natural understanding will look at a scripture to come up with a carnal interpretation or a carnal impersonation and an understanding of the scripture but a spiritual revelation of God will use, he will use it to interpret his own word when it comes to pass in your life. Amen. And so, Isaac, did you take that out? Did you, yeah, you got to take it out. Yeah, amen. So, uh, a natural understanding will take Matthew twenty-eight nineteen and make people baptize the wrong way in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But a spiritual revelation of the fulfillment of that scripture in Acts 2.38 will cause people to understand that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. A natural mind will cast doubt. A spiritual revelation will strengthen faith. Amen. A natural understanding will make you see God in a trinity, three persons in a Godhead. But with spiritual revelation, you will see God as one, manifested, one God manifested in a many-membered bride body. And that's also manifested in you. A natural understanding puts Jesus Christ off to the future. But a spiritual revelation, we know that it puts Christ here now in your brother and in sister. Amen. A natural understanding makes you see the veil, which is a covering, which is a form of religion. But a, a spiritual revelation will put Christ in you, the hope of glory, and it'll help you to see beyond the veil. Amen. A natural understanding of Scripture that talks about being baptized for the dead will make somebody go and start a religion baptizing people for dead people. A spiritual revelation will give you the understanding that it's not necessary because when people of Christ are raised from the dead, it puts the resurrection within you. Amen. Do you believe that when the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. And when you know that he is his word and when you accept his word, that puts the person of the resurrection within you. Amen. A natural understanding of the scripture will misinterpret the scripture. And when they see it says they shall take up deadly serpents and then, then not harm them. Sometimes people will make a religion out of it and go to tempt God trying to do that. But the spiritual revelation gives you the understanding that no natural thing can harm you because Christ is in you. And if a Christ be within you, and if he's for you, then nobody can be against you. Amen? A natural understanding is waiting for things to be fulfilled, but a spiritual revelation can look to see that things by faith have already been fulfilled in the mind of God. Amen? We're not waiting for anything. We are already seeing the things which God promised as done. A natural understanding will make you see Moses and Elijah and Jesus as three separate persons. But a spiritual understanding, like when Peter, James, and John looked back, they saw one. They originally saw three, but then they looked back with a greater focus and they saw one. A spiritual understanding will see those three as one to know that Christ is here now with that prophetic ministry. Amen. Let's read this scripture and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We're so thankful that you are coming here today to manifest your word to us once again, that we may see and know that you are alive, that you are here, that you are now, that you're not just a God of the past or the future, but you're here, a God of now, and that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Those people who can believe it, those people who can catch the vision, those people who can understand what you want them to know, because they were predestinated to see it before the foundation of the world, we pray that you would quicken it to them, dear Lord God. We love you, Lord. We believe in you. We're waiting for you now to reveal yourself more and more and to quicken your life to the hearts of the believer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we commit it unto you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and so, in order to see God, you have to be pure in heart. And what, what else could that mean? Who else is pure in heart except for the Lord Jesus Christ himself? When you have the Lord Jesus Christ in yourself, you have that purity in your heart because Jesus Christ is pure and you shall see God. When shall you see God? When you believe that he's in your brother, when you believe that he's in your sister, when you believe that he's within yourself. We'll see later how when you look into a glass, which is a mirror, you can see the image of God before you. Amen. Can you believe that he is within you? Can you believe that he is here now? John chapter 6, 44, it says, Nobody can come unto me except for my Father which has sent me draw him. Well, what's he going to draw you with? He's going to draw you with the word. What is the word? The word is himself. Nobody can come to me except for my Father draw. What is the, what is the Father? The Father's a spirit. Which way was the spirit manifested? He was manifested in flesh. So when he draws you by the word, who's he, what's he going to draw you to? He's going to draw you to the word made flesh, his own life. Amen. Nobody can come to the father except which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, do you understand that when Brother Branham said when the seventh church age is over, then you go into eternity? <clears throat> do you have to wait for your physical body? To drop in order to go into eternity when the Bible says we are now sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Have you believed that you've been raised up without death, without a physical death, knowing that you've spiritually died to your old self and then you have taken up your cross and you followed him? Amen. I will raise him up at the last day. Those people who are the beneficiary of that have believed it for what it says. It is written in the prophets, and I and they shall be taught of all taught of God. They shall and they shall be all taught of God. Well, who is taught of God? The unbelievers are not taught of God, but the believers are taught of God. And you know what God is? It goes back to once again, God is a spirit. So who's teaching you? It's the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit? How does he teach? Through the Word of God, through the revelation of what the word of God means for your day. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, Which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. <clears throat> you can't understand the thing of things of God by listening to an educated theologian that only knows what he's been taught by another theologian. You understand the word of God by the teaching of the Holy Spirit, by having a relationship with him, by knowing what his word means personally to you. But those things, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Amen. We're not trying to compare the natural with the spiritual. We're trying to compare spiritual things with the spiritual. But the natural man, the intellectual man, the educated man, he cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. You know why? Because that man is operating off of intellect. He's operating off of education. He may be operating off of natural things, but they're, they're going to be foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Amen? But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. If you're a spiritual person, if you have received the spiritual understanding of the spiritual revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, then 
that's a person that is worthy to judge because they're not looking at the natural, they're looking at the spiritual things. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, but yet he himself is judged of no man. Do you know why? Because a spiritual person has accepted the way of the Lord. The spiritual person has the keys to the kingdom. A spiritual person has been judged because they've already been, they've already accepted the word into their heart. Amen. For who knows the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Do you believe that we have the mind of Christ? Amen. In John chapter 6, verse 45, it says, Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. When you learn the spiritual revelation, when you learn the ways of the Lord, when you submit your ways unto him, when you die out to yourself and take up your cross and follow him, that's how you learn from the Father, the Spirit of the Lord. They, those are those that come unto him. Not that any hath man hath seen the Father, except, save means except, he which is of God. So you have to be predestinated to be able to see these things. Amen? When you're predestinated to eternal life, you're going to hear the word and you're going to recognize the Spirit of God that speaks unto you. He hath seen the Father. Amen? When you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. Verily, verily, I said unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. In order for you to have everlasting life, you have to believe the words which he has said. And remember, you believe from the heart. Amen. That's where the change takes place. It's not a change from the outside in. It's a change from the inside out. You just keep believing. You keep trusting. You keep on walking with the Lord. And he's going to reveal that you have everlasting life. Amen. He said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. He's not talking. I know that at one time he revealed himself by a miracle of giving that natural bread. But now he's saying he is the bread of life. He is that spiritual manna which came down from heaven. He was trying to say, look, you can eat that natural manna. You can take the word for its natural meaning. But he, the, he is the bread which come down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. A person would take this maybe and try to make a wafer out of them. When God's not in a wafer, he's not going to be transfigured into a physical wafer. He's going to be transformed into the image of his son by coming into you and me. As a result of what? Eating the heavenly manna, eating the spiritual revelation of who Jesus Christ is. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Well, how else? Can you die by eating a physical bread or a wafer? Yeah, you're going to still die. A natural fruit will bring, you can still be, bring a natural death. But when you eat the spiritual fruit from heavenly places in Christ Jesus, when you eat the spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ, who he is, when you eat the word for your day, you cannot die because that's accepting him and he's already died for you. So you don't have to die. Amen. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. If you eat the word of God, that's his life. That's his spirit. That's his word. When you eat that, the word for your day, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, you shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews, therefore, the skeptics, the ones who were not believing, they strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us flesh to eat? You see how they take the natural understanding and miss the revelation because they don't believe it? A real believer doesn't need to completely understand it, but the, when they see the word of God manifest, they say, I don't know how it is, but I believe it. They don't have to have uh, it explained to them because it's by faith, and that faith is his righteousness. Then Jesus said unto him, said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. They thought he was a cannibal. They thought he was talking about his physical flesh. 
but they didn't understand the spiritual revelation. Sometimes God will do things in your life. Sometimes God will say things in your life to see whether you really believe. Amen. Who's and uh, he said, I will raise him up at the last day. We'll praise God. We've had the last day. And how did he raise, raise us up? By his word. What did his word come to? His prophet. How did he manifest himself? Through signs, through wonders, through miracles, through discernments, and through the manifested word of that day, of this day. And that was the bread which he wanted us to eat. Amen. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. That means, can you accept the current manifestation that he is in today? Can you accept his life in you and in me and in the prophet messenger? That's what he's talking about. If you have the spiritual understanding and the revelation of what he means, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, in other words, partake of his life, dwelleth in me and I in him as the living father sent me and I live by the father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Why is it going to be living by him? Because it's going to be him living within you. Amen. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, because they're still looking to a day gone by. But he that eateth of this bread, in other words, the current manifestation of God's bread, the current message of the hour. Are you eating that bread? The bread that doesn't have wiggle tails in it. The bread that doesn't have maggots in it anymore. The fresh bread from heaven. The fresh revelation. Jesus Christ manifested for this day. These things saith he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of disciples when they heard this, they said, this is a hard saying. Why? Because they were trying to understand with a carnal mind. They're trying to understand with a natural mind. And they said, who can hear it? And Jesus knew him himself and his disciples murmuring at it. He said, he said unto them, does this offend you? What if you shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth. See, it's the spirit that quickens his life. It's not your natural mind. It's not your natural understanding. It's not your flesh. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that God speaks to us, they are spirit, they are life. That's what quickens. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew who from the beginning, who from the beginning, who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And there's a lot of people that have betrayed him in this day, taking dogmas and creeds and dogmas and substituting it for the true word of God. They're trying to make God in a little wafer without realizing that he's here now in his flesh just by believing his word and taking him for what he said. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Do you know what it means to see the Lord? You'll find out that Brother Branham says seeing is, it means to understand. And in order for you to see the kingdom of heaven, in order for you to understand the kingdom of heaven, you have to follow peace with all men and holiness. Amen. How do you accomplish that? By Jesus Christ living within you, because you can't live the life of Christ without him living it through you. Amen. But you have people who want to argue. You have people who want to debate. You have people that want to prove their point without taking the word of God for what it means, for what it says, for what the reality of it is. But people who want to follow at peace with all men, they don't want to start, they don't want to fight. They don't want to argue. They don't want to prove their point. They just want to give the word out and let people accept it. Let people by their free will, not trying to force it down their neck, but let people express their free will because God would rather have somebody that has a free will and accept the right way rather than to force them into believing something. And when you see people that have an iron dispensation that are so gung-ho about them wanting you to believe that the way they do, forget it. That's not the character of Christ. Christ is a gentleman. He'll come to you with respect. He'll come to you with love. He'll present the word and he'll let you make your decision. Amen? In Psalms 34 verse 8, the Bible says, 
taste and see. Well, how are you going to see by tasting something? Is he talking about a physical taste or a physical seeing? No, he's talking about truly partaking of his life, truly taking him as a, at his word and believing that what he says is his truth so he can manifest himself to you, so he can shine his light through you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If you want to know what it's really like to be good, take God at his word and believe him in humility and respect. And he's going to reveal himself to you. And he's going to reveal himself to whom he wants to. Amen. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Or are you trusting in yourself? Or are you trusting in a denominational idea? Are you trusting in church? God doesn't want you to trust in a church with a man-made religion. He wants you to trust in him, the current Lord of glory. Amen. Trust in his word. Amen. John chapter 11, verse 40, it says, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee? Didn't I say unto you, if you would believe thou should see the glory of God? Let me see. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, do you want to see the glory of God? Do you want to see God change your whole life around? Do you want to see his perfect will manifested? Do you want to see the Lord Jesus Christ come on the scene because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Then if you believe his word, you take him at his word, and you're going to see the glory of God. Do you know why? Because His he's glorified through his saints. How is he glorified through his saints? By taking him for what he said. Amen. For, beli for believing what his word says. Amen. <clears throat> Romans 8, 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. If you can see it to believe it, that's not hope. But real hope comes from believing his word and taking him for what he meant, taking from what he said and meaning it in your heart. For what a man seeth, what does he yet hope for? In other words, if you can see something spiritual, you don't need to hope for it anymore. It's just as good as done. By faith and by revelation, you can put your money where your mouth is when it's according to his will and when it's according to his word. You don't have to have hope. It's done. But if we hope that what we see not, in other words, if you believe God's word, if you believe God's promises, if you you don't need to see something with your physical eye in order to understand that it exists, that it's there, that it's real, that it's for you, then we do with patience, wait for it. Then you're going to say, like Abraham did, he had to have patience to wait for it, but he took God at his word for the promised son Isaac, and it came to pass. Amen. Looking to the things of the unseen calling those things which are not as though they are. Amen. And he searcheth the hearts, knowing what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to his, his will, he's going to make intercession for you. But we know that the intercessor is now living within us. <laughs> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love him. I don't care what it looks like to your own natural eye. Understand what the mind of the spirit is. We don't look to the things which are seen. We look beyond that and see the spiritual blessing beyond those things which are seen. Amen. We know that all things work together Together for good to them that love God, no matter how bad things look, no matter how good they look, they all work for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. But do you love God? He that loves God believes his commandments. He that loves God follows his word. Amen. To them who are called according to his purpose. Do you believe that you are called this morning according to his purpose? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. First, he foreknew you. He predestinated you because he knew that you were going to accept his word. To be conformed to the image of his son. What is the image of his son? That's his offspring. That's his uh, uh, His son was conformed to his image by believing his word. Amen. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, did he predestinate them he also called, and whom he called, those who he has justified. 
and those who he justified, those he has glorified. Do you know what justified means? Justifies means that you never even did it. You know why? Because he saw you before the foundation of the world. He predestinated you. He saw your substance even before you were substance. And he called you and he predestinated you. He foreknew you and he justified you, which means you never even did it. And he also glorified you. Amen. So why does he say in this next scripture, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Do not fear what man can do for you, can do to you, whether there be famines or wars or rumors of wars or enemies or family members who have a bad spirit on them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you are safe and secure in Jesus Christ in the revelation of who he is, which is the revelation of who you are. You know that your name's been written on the book, the Lamb's book of life, and therefore let the atomic bombs fall. Nothing can hurt you anymore. You are safely safe and secured. And it, and it, and it bugs me. It's, it disappoints me when people don't get the understanding. They get so bent out of shape out of all the different things of life. And it's going to happen. But just remember, but at some point in time, we have to put our faith to show that we're trusting him. Amen. But you are going to have those difficult times because that law of contrast has to exist in order to express the positive, the negative has to exist in order to express the positive. There has to be something contrary to his nature to express his nature. There has to be something temporal so that he can overcome it and express the eternal within you. Amen. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Do you believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Well, what is the land of the living? The land of the living is you and I. So where are they going to see the goodness of the Lord? In the land of the living. You are the land of the living. If you've received his word, wait on the Lord. What does that mean? Just wait and do nothing? No, wait means to be a waiter, to, ex to, to serve the Lord, to believe him with all his heart, your heart. Even no matter what comes your way, no matter what negative things come your way, you're still going to serve him. You're still going to wait on the Lord, serve one another, give him the word of God. That's the best way you can serve one another is to express his attributes to someone else. Eternal life is living for others. Be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. Why? Because it changes from the inside out. He, oh, oh, true son of God doesn't need the things of the world to be strengthened. He just needs the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. And all, he has everything he has need of. Amen. Wait, I say on the Lord. Praise God. Amen. John chapter three, verse two. The same came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. How many times have somebody come with a question just to tempt you and you know that their spirit is wrong because they're trying to find fault. You get what you expect. Unbelievable. I've seen YouTube videos this past week where they come in innocence thinking they want to have a conversation with a person who's preaching in the streets and they say, I want you to prove to me that God is here. Well, guess what? If they come with skepticism, they're never going to see him because God's going to get give them what they expect. But if you expect to see the hand of God, then he will reveal himself to you. Hallelujah. Thou art a te We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except that thou doest, except God would be with him. Well, they knew it intellectually, but did they really believe? They knew it intellectually, but do they really believe from the heart? There's a difference from a natural conception, a natural understanding, and a deep-rooted, sincere belief in the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's here now. Jesus said unto them, <laughs> Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot understand the kingdom of God being here. You can't understand that God is within me unless you're born again. And you know what you got to do to be born again? Is come to me with faith. Come to me believing his word. Amen. But they thought there he was there to play games. Uh-uh. They had another thing coming. Amen. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man born be born when he is old? Can he enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? See how much of a skeptic he was? 
Come on, looking at the natural things? The natural interpretation showed their unbelief, but the spiritual revelation brings his word to life. Amen. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except be a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. You know what entering into the kingdom of God is? That's when he is also in you. Entering into him and he enters into us because the bride and the, the wife of Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ is one. That which is born of flesh is flesh. The nature of a pig is the nature of a pig. You're not going to change it, but it's the quickening power changes it when you get the revelation of who he is. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again. You must receive that spiritual revelation of him being here now and understand that he is here and we are one. But if they had stood in my counsel, in Jeremiah chapter 23 to 22, but if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, are you causing his people to hear his words? Or are you causing people to hear the word of some man or the word of some church or the word of some intellect? Amen. Brother Branham said, I'm convinced that too many people are getting to church, but they're not getting to Christ. That's what I want is for people to be turned to Christ, not a church system, not a denomination, but him himself, the way, the truth, and the life. And I had caused my people to hear thy, my words and that they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I... Am I a God at hand? Do you know what at hand means? That means now. He's at hand. <clears throat> Saith the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And not a God afar off. Why is he not afar off? Because he's living in you and in me. If you are believers, if you are predestinated, can any hide himself in the secret places that I shall not see him? Let me tell you something. When you pray, brothers and sisters, go with this attitude that he knows everything about you. If you want to have results in your prayer, you better be honest with him and you better be honest with yourself. And when you are honest with him, when you are honest with yourself, when you know that you're nothing and when you know that you really want him more than anything else, he's going to honor your prayer. Present your token with the prayer. Present his life with your prayer and there's nothing he won't do for you. But have the right motive, have the right objective, have the right purpose for God revealing himself to you. Not so that you can be exalted, so that he could be manifested and exalted and appear to others. Amen. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth? Is he not omnipotent? Is he not omnipresent? Yes, he's present in his believers. Amen. Hallelujah, saith the Lord. You may be able to fool your brother, but you're not going to fool him. That's why when I see people <clears throat> that I used to know and they lie to you, and do you think that God didn't reveal to me that they were not telling the truth? <laughs> you're not going to, you can fool your brother, you can fool your sister, but you're not going to fool God on the inside that has the discernment because he's a God of of heaven and earth, he's a God of now. You can't come to him being dishonest and expect. You, it's just, you just better be straight up. You just better be honest with yourself. You better be honest with him because he's here now and he sees everything you're doing. And he knows the troubles you have and he knows your heart and he's going to see it through. Amen. For those people who have the right motive, the right objective for him to be glorified and not for them to be exalted beyond measure. But for Christ to be glorified, he's going to take care of you, brothers and sisters. Don't worry. It, it, may, it doesn't matter how long it takes. He that started the work will be faithful to perform it until the day of Christ. The day of Christ is now. Amen. I have heard what the prophets said. The false prophets. They prophesy lies in my name. Who's a false prophet but prophesies lies. You know why? Because it comes from their own idea. It comes from their own interpretation. It comes from an idea that Jesus is not here now, but he's coming from a day in the future. 
these are the prophets. See, these are the prophets that are lying, saying that he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he says, I've dreamed a dream. I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit in their own heart. They've only, they've even deceived themselves, thinking that something that is false is the truth. What think, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams? You know how they get to, you know how they forget their, his name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? By putting them off into the future, by putting them as a God of the past, but not the God of now. That's how they crucify Christ. They take, they take their own name. They take their own name. They take the name of a denomination and put it above the name of God. They take their own ideas and put it above the word of God. That's right. Amen. They forget his name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Well, you know what the name of Baal can entail? And put the name of any denomination there that you want to in this day. And I'll show you a people that have forgotten the name of God for the name of a denomination which represents a man's idea over God's. Amen. John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Do you believe on the Son? Do you believe that he's here? Do you believe that his Son means offspring is his, and his offspring is here now? He that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. In Revelations chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and also they which pierced him. So you have the believer that is going to see him, and also the unbeliever. When that cloud came down in 1963, and all of the word of God, all the children of God were represented in that cloud, People physically saw it. People saw it in the cover of Time magazines and mysterious clouds over the clouds of Arizona. They didn't know that that was the coming of the Lord, a manifestation of the coming of the Lord. Every predestinated eye saw him. That means everybody that was predestinated to see, not just physically, but spiritually, understand that that was the coming of the Lord. Amen. They also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. That's right. Because he proved his word to be true. Every predestinated eye will see him. The natural mind will not. The carnal interpreter will not. The carnal, the unbeliever will not see him. They won't understand. They'll leave it as a natural cloud. They won't understand the spiritual significance of the coming of the Lord. Amen. Luke chapter 8, verse 16. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, cover it with a vessel or put it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick. They that, they that which enter in may see the light. Remember, in order to come into the kingdom, you have to first leave all the things of the world. Uh, the world is, uh, God's word calls for a total separation of unbelief unbelief from anything that's not of him you have to come out of the world and enter into christ to see the light christ means anointing in order to enter into his anointing you have to first believe the word amen you come out of the world and enter into him and then that way you're going to see the light you're going to see the truth you're going to see his word you're going to see him manifested you're going to see him here now acts chapter 2 verse 30 therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn an oath to him that would that of the fruit of his loins what is the fruit of his loins the man of the believer manifested in flesh that is the fruit of his loins the fruit of the of your day is the word for your day you are the word for the day if you have accepted his word of the day according to his flesh that he would raise up Christ. What is Christ? The anointing. Well, where is the anointing going to be? It's going to be sitting on his throne. What is the throne? It's a position of authority. Where is the position of authority? Brother Branham said that the third throne was in the heart of man. Good morning, Christ, the anointing. Good morning, the throne of God. I hope you were well today. I hope you were receiving his word. He seeing this before he spoke of the resurrection of Christ. 
Before the resurrection of Christ, he spoke that he was going to sit on his throne. And now in this last day, he has fulfilled it. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. Amen. That he spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. His nature was not left in hell. He's gonna, not going to leave the real believer in hell. He's going to, he has already prevailed. He has already overcome. Neither his flesh did see corruption. Amen. This Jesus has raised up whereof we are all witnesses. Listen to this scripture that goes right along with the witness. We are all witnesses. Who are all witnesses? Not the unbeliever. The real believer are his witness. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, he said, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Amen. Do you believe you have the witness in yourself? Do you believe that's the Spirit of the Lord manifesting himself to be the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. He that believeth on the Son of God has a witness in himself. He that believeth not... God has made him a liar because he believed not the record that he gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And that life is in his son. That life is in his offspring. That life right now is manifested in the form of the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ. The current manifestation of his anointing. His son, his offspring, his word. His word is spirit and they is, it is life. Amen. He that hath the son has life. And he that hath not the son hath not life. These things I have written unto you that you believe on the name of the son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. Do you believe you have eternal life this morning? Amen. If you're part of God, you always had it. And you always will have it. Amen. That, that you may have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God said in another place that I can do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly anything over what we ask and think. He can give you more than what you're asking for when you are his and you take him at his word. Amen. And we, if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. That goes right along with that scripture I read earlier, that if you really believe, you don't have to have hope. You've got it like it's already done. That is faith working. Faith says it's already done. Hope says it, it's, it's going to be done, but faith says it is. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It's already done. Amen. Therefore, by being the right hand of God and exalted and having received the promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father is the promise of the Holy Ghost. He has shed forth this, which you now see in here. How can you see in here now? Because God's in his wife, because God's in his bride, because God's speaking, God's hearing, God's knowing, God's manifesting himself. For David is not ascended into the heavens. But he saith unto him, the Lord said unto my Lord. One manifestation of the Lord was revealing another manifestation of the Lord. Sit on my right hand. In other words, sit in a position of authority behind my word until I make my thy foes thy footstool. You know what's going to happen when you take God at his word? When you are in a position of authority because of believing his word, your enemies are going to fall. Amen. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. They thought they were going to kill him. Well, guess what? He came back to life. Where is he in life? In the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when they heard this and they were pricked in their heart, they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and unto your children and to those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Brother Branham said one time, show me where the apostolic age ceased. It never ceased. You know why? Because the true apostle is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is still here in his people. Amen. 
Hallelujah. What should we do? So what should we do? What was he saying? In so many words, he was saying, obey the word. That's what you shall do. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, follow his word with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And then he's going to call those people who are his through you. Amen. First John chapter three, verse one. Behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Do you feel honored? Do you feel so privileged this morning to know him? Amen. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knows him not. Amen. How can the world know him without knowing you when Christ lives within you? The two are one. That's right. And if a person comes and disrespects you, God help him. <clears throat> Beloved, now we are the sons of God, not will be. The Bible says now we are sons of God. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear... And he has appeared. How did he appear? Through his prophet messenger. How does he appear? Through the people who believe in him. We shall be like him. Why? Because that's his word carrying his life out through you. Do you know that you are an extension of him? That you are part of him? That you are one with him? And that we are a continuation of the book of Acts? Amen. For we shall see him as he is. When I see the Holy Spirit manifesting himself with his word, with the right heart and the right motive in my brother, in my sister, then we shall see him as he is. Praise God, because that's his word. And every man that has this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. Do you have that hope within yourself? That he is here now. That's how you purify yourself. That's how you clean yourself. Because you know he's here. Amen. You know he has the same ability. If you know he's here, you know he has the same power he did when he walked 2,000 years ago. Amen. But there's other people that are not going to believe. There are, there's other people that are not going to be a partaker of these blessings. And he says, therefore I speak to them in parables. That's right. You know what? The words that we're speaking right now, even though it's the truth, even though it's the word of God, it's going to be parables for those people who are not going to receive it because seeing they see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing they shall hear and they shall not understand and seeing they shall see and not perceive. People saw, there's so many people that saw the miracles that happen in the ministry of the prophet and did not believe it, even though they saw it. That's why when a person doesn't has a will not to believe, they're not going to see it, no matter what proof you show them. Amen. For these people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes, they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I would heal them. It's kind of like, it reminds me, when God's, when Abel told Cain, if thou do well, then you shall be accepted. But if not, sin lieth at the door. Unbelief. Let's be a people that believe. Amen. But blessed are your eyes, for they see. Blessed are your eyes because you are seeing the word of God. You're seeing the revelation of the hour. You're seeing the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though you may not understand everything, you can see it by faith and by revelation in your ears. For they hear, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. You know why? Because it wasn't time for the full revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ to be here. But now... Through his prophet messenger, through his voice, through his servant, through the word of God made manifest. He opened up all the mysteries. He opened up all the seals. He opened up the understanding, the revelation of the book of life. And now we see, now we understand. Amen. For 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, seeing that we have such hope. We use great plainness of speech. Well, it's plain to us. Amen. But if even if you don't understand it, keep in the word and God will reveal it to you. Amen. 
We use plainness of speech, not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil is untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away with Christ? If you want to see the Lord Jesus Christ in this day, if you want to look beyond the veil, it comes from the word of the day, the word of the hour, the current manifestus. Current, current manifestation of the word made flesh. But even unto this day when Moses is read, in other words, a message for the day gone by, the veil is upon their heart. Amen. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. When it shall turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, when the emphasis shall be turned to the Lord Jesus Christ in his current manifestation, the veil is taken away. You know why? Now I can see my brother. Now I can see my sister. Now I can see who they are. The Lord Jesus Christ being man manifested. The Lord and his prophet. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What kind of liberty is it? Liberty to sin? No. Liberty to freely live according to his will. The freedom to live as Christ live. But we all, with open face beholding, as in a glass, in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Do you see the glory of the Lord in you? If not, go back and look at it again. If you don't see your name in every scripture of the Bible, if you don't see the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in every scripture of the Bible, go back and read it again. Are changed into the same image from glory to glory. You know what glorifies God? When you believe his word. So when you believe his word, he's glorified. And then you may have some hard times. You may have some difficult times. But then when you believe it again, he's glorified again. Amen. Even as the spirit of the Lord. Amen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power unto God. The gospel of Christ in its current manifestation is the power of God unto salvation. For anyone, everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and all to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by those things which are made. Guess what? You were made. You know what you were made for? To be clearly seen. For who to be clearly seen? The Lord Jesus Christ in you. Amen. So that you, So that... Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Do you know why people don't have an excuse for following the Lord? Because they see, because Christ is manifested within you and me. Amen. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. There's a lot of people that worship in a man-made way, by dogmas, creeds, and religions. They claim to be wise, but they became fools, not realizing that Christ is here now. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made but to corruptible man. That's what they did when they created the image in the, the golden calf in the desert. Because when Moses left, who God was in, they wanted to speed things up. And they made their own image. And they made... Uh, an idol, even though God was there. They couldn't wait on God. Can you wait on God? Amen. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their hearts to dishonor the bodies between themselves, who chained the truth of God to the lie and worship that served the Creator, the creature more than the Creator. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> That's what happens. When people don't accept the full word of God, when they, people don't accept that he's here, when they want to follow their own way, they get a perversion of what he really is, and they make that their God. Amen. In Revelations chapter 21, 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. You know what? You, people were waiting for a physical new heaven and new earth to come out of heaven when they don't understand that the new Jerusalem is the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the... Wife of the Lord Jesus Christ is the holy city. 
coming out of God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Doesn't that give you a clue? What the new city is, what the new Jerusalem is, it comes down from God, from heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Amen. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And people were waiting for a, a physical manifestation of this to happen when God has already come in the form of the Holy Ghost, as he said in his word, remember what Brother Branham said, I'll remind you again that the right mental attitude towards any one of the promises of God shall bring it to pass. How could he say that on the, upon the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, all scripture would be fulfilled? Because it happened spiritually. Don't look any farther than yourself, brothers and sisters, and you will see God's word fulfilled. You will see revelation fulfilled. Amen. And God shall wipe all the tears from their eyes. There shall be no more sorrow, no more death, no more crying. Near there shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes into your heart, he is going to make you a new creature, a new creation, created in him for his glory. Amen. And he said unto me, Write these words, for they are faithful and true. True and faithful. Amen. Men and women tonight, catch the vision. Understand what God's program is for this last day. That's all we need to do is just get into his program. Then the other things will take care for themselves. You don't need to worry about it anymore. When you get into his program, everything will take care of itself because you're trusting in him and not in yourself. He taught us that way. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So let's come back tonight, Lord, to the kingdom blessings, to the kingdom program, and learn of thee, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Why all these visions? I just lay my life right on any because it never fails. I have faith in it. I believe in it. Amen. And if I can get you to believe the same thing, it's over then. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll go ahead and end there. And just leave you with that. To see means to understand. Amen. I hope that was a blessing to you. God bless you so much, brothers and sisters. I hope it will enrich your life. I hope it will make God real to you. I hope you will see his life in yours. He desires it to be so. The spiritual revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ is a God of today and not of yesterday, but now. Amen. When you have the right motive, when you have the right objective for him being revealed, he will reveal himself to you and others through you. Amen. God bless you. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, we're thankful, dear Lord God, for the reading of the word, for the understanding of the truth, and that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray, dear Lord God, that we would constantly renew our life into your own image, dear Lord Jesus that you will continually manifest yourself to be the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that people may know that you are here, not just a hope, but a faith saying it has been done, knowing that all things have been complete, knowing that your will is being done, knowing that you're here now. We thank you, Lord God. We trust you. We love you. We commit our lives into your hands. As you've given these lives, Lord, Lord God, we give them back to you for you to be glorified. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you. Amen.